Hello, class. I decided to record a shorter version of a lecture for chapter seven. I will most likely record it in two parts because um, I'm going to upload it to on YouTube, and uh, each component should not be more than fifteen minutes. So, chapter seven, we are moving into a new type of uh, business, merchandising. Uh, and we're going to study accounting for a merchandiser. So pretty much for a retailer, we're going to have inventory now. Our accounting cycle remains the same, but we will have a few new accounts and new journal entries. So chapter seven and eight pretty much cover uh, accounting for merchandisers. So here we're going to talk about sales, receivables, cash receipts. In chapter eight, we're going to talk about purchases, accounts payables, and cash payments. Um, these are your specific objectives for this chapter. I am going to skip this one, record the payment of sales taxes. I'm not going to put it on the test. So uh, this is the name of the company we're using, uh, Max Out Sporting Goods. It's a retail business. Um, it's a sole proprietorship. Now we have inventory. So this is a new account, merchandise inventory, which is an asset. Um, these are five accounts we are dealing with, five new accounts we're dealing with in this chapter, in addition to the accounts we know. So uh, let me talk about these accounts separately. Okay, so here we go. So right now, we used to have only one revenue account, which we used to call fees income. Now we're going to have one main revenue account. We will call it sales. It's just like fees income, just called sales minus plus normal credit balance. And we are going to have two contra revenue accounts. We didn't have them before. One is sales returns and, and allowances, and another one is sales discounts. So both of these accounts are classified as contra revenue. So they have plus on the left and minus on the right. Their signs are the opposite of a regular revenue account. Uh, you can think of them as sim you know accounts similar to expenses. So, in chapters 1 through 6, we did accounting for a service business. So, our income statement was fairly simple. We just had one revenue account, fees income, subtracted expenses, and then we had our net income and net loss. For a merchandising business, the idea is the same, but instead of one revenue account, we now have three revenue accounts. To be specific, one revenue and two contra revenue accounts. So sales minus sales returns and allowances minus sales discounts gives us net sales. This is what we are studying in chapter seven, net sales. That's the top of the income statement for a merchandising business. Then we're going to subtract a new account that we will study in chapter 8 called COGS, Cost of Goods Sold, Cost of Merchandise Sold, or Cost of Goods Sold. The difference will be equal to so-called gross profit, not net profit, but gross profit. And then we're going to subtract expenses, same expenses as we had with you in the previous chapters. And then we will have net income, net loss. So the income statement is longer. The idea is the same. We start with revenues and we subtract contra revenues, cost of goods sold, expenses to get net income. It's just going to get longer. So in addition to three new revenue accounts in chapter seven, you will use a new liability account called sales tax payable. Sales tax is charged by retailers uh, for every sale, you know, about 10% in the Bay Area. But if you think about it, when we charge it as a retailer, 
it's not the money that belongs to us. It's the money that belongs to the state, so it's a liability. When we charge it, it goes up credit. And when we pay it once a month, sometimes more often we pay it to the state, we will send the check and we debit decrease this liability account. And the fifth account we have is uh, an expense account, credit card expense to record a charge we pay if the customer uses credit cards. So these are your five new accounts. They're listed right here. They're normal balances, so you need to know them. Okay, journal entries. Let's first of all record sales for cash. Nothing new, you've done it before. I perform services for cash. Now we say uh, we record a sale of $500 for cash, debit cash, credit sales. Sales is your revenue account. If it's a sale on account, on January 3rd, we sold merchandise on credit, means on account, to Roy Anderson issuing sales slip 1101 for $400. So you debit AR, you credit sales. You mentioned the sales slip uh, in the description. That's a source document. Nothing new. And then later, so the previous entry was January 3rd, a sale on account. On January 31st, we receive cash from the credit customer. Roy Anderson pays us. We receive cash, cash debit and we close or decrease credit accounts receivable. You studied these types of transactions in chapters two and three and four. Now, this is something new since we are actually operating in the state which charges sales tax. Here we have an example of a journal entry to record a sales of $500 plus tax for cash. So this is the actual sale, $500. Sales tax on that amount is $40. The percentage will be given to you. So this, you know, why it's $40, the problem will always tell you what's the percent. And guys, together, this is the cash we receive from customer. One debit, two credits. So this is your new liability account. When you credit it, it goes up. When you pay to the state, you would debit this account, sales tax payable, credit cash, whenever you make a payment. Um, this is the same example, just instead of receiving cash, we are recording a sale on credit, a sale on account. 600 merchandise sold plus sales tax together AR. The customer owes us the amount for both, the amount of the purchase or the sale plus sales tax. So this is an example of a sales slip. So you can see here the customer bought weight sets, $600 plus sales tax. So this is the amount of AR, accounts receivable, the customer uh, the customer's name is NN. She owes us 648, which includes includes 48 dollars of sales tax. Now, what if the customer makes a return? So, I introduced a new account called Sales Returns and Allowances. Uh, sales return is when the customer physically has to ship the goods back to us we are going to physically receive the merchandise back. Uh, sales allowance is when the customer notifies us that something went wrong and we tell them to keep the product, but we will give them an allowance, kind of like a discount, but we are not going to physically receive merchandise back from the customer. From uh, an accounting perspective, Returns and allowances are the same types of transactions because we are given a refund, either a cash refund or we're given a, a credit memo. 
it's kind of just like you go to the store and you make a return and if they don't give you cash they can give you store credit so if the customer made a purchase for cash we give them a cash refund if the customer had a credit sale then we give them a credit memo meaning we decrease credit accounts receivable the amount they owe us so as i talked before this is a contra revenue account sales returns and allowances it has a plus and a minus so it has a plus right here on the debit side that's where it's normal balance because it's the opposite of revenues and it has a minus on the credit side contra revenue so when the customer makes a re return and we give them a cash refund we pretty much reverse the original entry we flip it over we give them cash back credit so this cash right here that goes down we have to decrease the amount of sales tax we right so this is the amount of sales tax payable debit minus and guys, we debit increase the contra revenue account. This is the amount of original purchase, the original sale. So pretty much that's the entry. Now, if the original sale was on account, then here instead of cash, we would credit accounts receivable. That's why we call it a credit memo. Or that's why stores call it store credit because accounts receivables would be decreased credited so this is an example of a credit memo this is the amount returned plus sales tax we have to give back to the customer this is the total amount we are crediting decreasing they owe us $216 less so this is the last slide in this part of the video when we record uh, a return from a customer on credit these are three accounts and how they are impacted sales returns goes up sales tax payable goes down accounts receivables goes down okay so i will finish this chapter lecture in the next video thank you so much